I hit the record button. I'm not used to doing this, guys. I, I thank you so much. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Adrian Ramirez. I'm the Associate Director of the Career Development Center at Fresno State. And I'm also uh, in charge of the uh, Money Management Center right now on our campus. And I bring in a variety of different speakers and, and, and activities for you know students to get engaged and people to listen to. And today's great speaker, dynamic speaker, we have him back. He was earlier in the semester. He did a great uh, webinar for us on home buying and a lot of students love that. A lot of people who enjoyed listening to that. But today we're going to talk about credit scores and credit reports and things that you need to understand. And so I have today Mike Jones from Educational Employees Credit Union. And he's going to be uh, providing you the information, the content, sharing his screen, his slides. And again, I'll be joining in the chat. So if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to ask, and uh, you know, I can ask uh, Mike for you. So that'd be terrific. So Mike, Mike, thank you for being here. I appreciate you know another great presentation from you today. Fantastic. Good afternoon. Good to see everybody. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Do a little screen management here so I can see as much as possible as well. So yes, my name is Mike Jones and I work for Educational Employees Credit Union. We partner with uh, Fresno State to provide some financial education, financial wellness um, education. So today is credit reports and credit scores. So first off, think of a credit report as a report card. And you're familiar with report cards. You get them every semester and it lists all of your classes and how you've done. Well, you're credit report is just a report card on how you've been paying your loans. So we're not talking about your regular bills. We're not talking about your insurance. We're not talking about your utility bill. Um, we're talking about things that you have a loan on. And so that would be your credit report. Now, let's say that, for example, I have an auto loan and I make my payment and I make my payment and I make my payment. And so it's going to show that I've been making my payment all along. If all of a sudden I miss my payment, it's going to say that I was up to date, now I'm behind, um, and that's going to show on my credit report. Next month I make a payment and I catch up the one that was past due, it'll say that I was up to date, that I was behind, and then I'm up to date again. I make another payment, it'll say, oh, he's up to date, but don't forget, he was behind two months ago. I make another payment, it says, oh, don't forget, he was behind three months ago. A year later, don't forget, he was behind a year ago. So how long can negative information, how long can they talk trash about me? How long can negative information stay on my credit report? Well, seven years. Seven years for just regular old, it's not good information. After seven years, it has to come off. Now, positive information can stay longer, but negative information by law, seven years, unless it falls into certain categories. One of those categories is bankruptcy. If a bankruptcy is on your credit report, it can stay on between seven and 10 years, depending on the type of bankruptcy. Now, bankruptcy is when you can't pay your loans and it looks like you're never going to be able to pay your loans. So you petition the US government to help protect you and make the people that you owe go away because they don't get paid. It's on your credit report, potentially 10 years. There's some other items that could be on your credit report a long time as well. So I have student loans listed there, not because student loans are a negative thing on your credit report. If you're paying them on time, it is a positive rating on your credit report, but the average person takes over 20 years to pay back their student loan. So obviously that could be on there a long time. Financial judgments. Somebody takes you to court to prove that you owe them money and the judge wraps his or her gavel and decides, yes, you do owe them money. That's a financial judgment against you. And that could be on your credit report longer than seven years as well. And then if you're behind in your taxes, whether it's state, local, or federal um, taxes, um, you, that would be on your credit report. The good news is that your credit can be repaired. Um, and the first thing that um, I want to make sure that you know can repair your credit is time. If something comes off your credit report in seven years, then obviously time can help heal your credit report. The second thing is payments. So think of that, think of your payments kind of like the equivalent of doing your homework, right? You do your homework, your report card gets better. You make your payments, your credit report gets better. Time and payments together are very powerful. The third thing is disputes. If something is not correct on your credit report, you can dispute it. And I'm gonna give you more information about that in a few slides. The fourth thing is statements. 
What if the information on your credit report is true, but it doesn't really tell the whole story? Maybe because of COVID where you work closed down and so you didn't have an income and so you weren't able to pay your bills. Well, that could make a difference when you go and apply for a loan on whether they approve you or not. They don't know why you missed some payments, but when you got all caught up to date again, maybe you can put a statement in your credit report explaining what happened and that could make a difference on you getting approved for a loan. So like, uh, before you get moving on to the next slide. Uh, so I have a student who asked a question and you're gonna have to help me on this one. So how about student loan on forbearance? Is that a negative impact? It's neither negative nor positive. It is. It will show in your credit report, and it'll show forbearance. So it doesn't. Um, it doesn't give you any bump. It doesn't give you any negatives, um, and it doesn't. Um, it, it's not used in the calculations of how much you owe and the the payment uh, monthly, which is going to make more sense in a few slides. But yeah, it does. It shows, but it's almost like. Um, parenthetical or think of it in a, as an asterisk. It's, it's good information, but it's not used in any calculations. Okay, thank you, thank you. So um, my credit report can get better. So that's, that's important to remember. Don't give up if something is wrong, it can get better. Okay, so that's the credit report. Let's talk about credit score. Think of a credit score the same way that you think of a GPA. So GPA is a number based on a formula that gets all the information from your, your report card. Well, the credit score is a number. It's based on a formula that gets all the information from your credit report. And it's traditionally on a 350, pardon me, 800, 300 to 850 score. Um, and I'll give you some more breakdowns of what's good and what's not so good on that. Um, but 300 to 850, um, and you know, don't, don't get too wrapped up in the score. It's important to know it, but the minor details between, oh, let's say a, a 740 and a 741, there's not much difference. So now here's a trivia question. Now, if you guys can put some answers in the chat and we'll find out, and, and it's just for, just for fun, um, or as they say, kicks and giggles. Um, the residents of what state have the highest credit score? Do you think it's California, Minnesota, New York, Texas, or North Dakota? Go ahead and in chat, put your, um, your guess. And again, it's just for fun, a way to keep us interacted. We got one says Texas. Texas. Uh, we got another Texas. Okay. We got Minnesota. California. Okay, so they're coming in North Dakota. Couple North Dakotas now, another Minnesota, Texas. Uh, we should have done this as a poll to kind of see how many total <laughs> there were. <laughs> um, next time we'll have to think about that. Uh, California, Minnesota. A lot of people are picking other than California. Well, now no, there's a couple more Californias coming in now. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. All right. Minnesota. If I were to take a guess, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'd probably pick either North Dakota or Minnesota because the populated areas, in my opinion, would probably have a lot of people uh, in, in a different environment. Oh, there you go. There you, you found it. Minnesota. So the average score for the residents of Minnesota are 728. Um, I pulled that figure in 2019, but while we were um, just before the workshop today, I went in to see if they had changed any data from that website, and they had not changed any data, so it looks like Minnesota is still, still the winner. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind, 728. That might give you a clue on the next trivia question that we do later in the workshop. So credit scores are used because they are fair and they're fast. So let's talk about that. They're fair and they're fast. Let's talk about how they're fair. When I first started working in the lending industry, I was working for a company that wasn't using a credit score formula. Um, back then, it wasn't very common to use a credit score formula. They became more common really in the mid to late 90s, really. Um, so before that, even though they existed, most companies were just kind of looking at things and they would judge it um, based on their experience. 
So they would show us a good credit report and a good application, and they would say, you should approve this loan. And they would show us a bad credit report and say, you should deny this loan. And they would show us a good one and a bad one and a good one and a bad one. And you just had to have a feeling for what is good and bad. But when you go by feelings, you come to work one day and you're in an extra good mood. So you're approving lots of things without realizing that they're actually over in the denied side of the, uh, the equation. And the next day you come to work and you're not in as good of a mood. So you're not approving things that you should. You're denying things that are over on the dividing line side of what should be approved. So this is not good. We want that first scenario. We do not want the second and third scenario because they're unfair and they're bad business. So you can see that if we had an equation, the equation isn't based on your mood. It's not based on how you're feeling. It is taking data from the credit report and coming up with a number and just figure that that's the deciding line there between the good and the bad and everything on one side gets approved. We also use credit scores because they're fast. So this um, graph shows the average amount of consumer credit, you can also call it consumer debt, that's everything other than real estate, for people from 1952 to 2017. And you can see that um, these days there's a whole lot more debt than there was in the past. That means there's a whole lot more applications than there was in the past. It's gonna take us a while to do every application. We need all the modern conveniences of our computer, the built-in software, the built-in equations in that software to help us make fast decisions. And as a matter of fact, um, a lot of uh, agencies use automatic or automated decisions where the computer looks at high scores and gives it an automatic yes, looks at the low scores and gives it an automatic no, but in the middle, it usually does still take human eyes. Um, the reason it takes human eyes in the middle is because, remember, we said you could put a statement in there. There might be extenuating circumstances, things that a person can take into consideration that the, um, the computer wouldn't be able to calculate. We want to push as many things as possible into the approved side of this spectrum rather than the denied side of the spectrum. What information is on a credit report? Well, it has personal identification information, such as your name social security number, where you live, and where you work. Has public record information. We've talked about some of that already, such as the judgments. Someone takes you to court, proves that you owe the money. That's a judgment on your credit report. Liens. Now, what a lien is, it is it's a little bit different than a judgment. There are some types of, of obligations that when you sign a contract, you're agreeing that if you don't pay it, they can put a lien against you or your property. As an example, I know somebody that went to the hospital, went to the emergency room, and they didn't have insurance. They were in there for a week. Well, you can imagine what the cost is for an emergency room and then a stay in the hospital for a week. Well, a year later, they still hadn't paid it because they just didn't have the money. Um, so the hospital ended up putting a lien against their property, against their house. They could not sell their house without paying off the hospital bill. Um, they, when they did go to sell their house, thankfully they got an offer that was enough to pay off what they owed on the house and the hospital. So they were finally able to sell the house and, and go to a, a, their next property. Past due taxes are on there and your bankruptcies are on there. Then there's the creditor information. So that's who you owe money to, the balances, the types of credit, such as, is it a mortgage? Is it a car loan? Is it a credit card? Is it just a, a regular installment loan? Um, all the different types of, of credit would be listed there. And the limits. The limit goes along with your credit cards and other lines of credit. You know that when you get a credit card, you don't have to use the credit card at all. And when you do use it, you don't have to use the whole limit. So along with the balance, how much you're using, there is the limit how much you can use that is listed on your credit card, on your credit report. And then there's the payment history, how you've paid. Inquiries. Inquiries is a section of your credit report that does confuse people. So let's explain it in a little bit more detail. Anytime you apply for a loan, somebody, a credit lender, is going to be looking at your credit report. And the fact that they did that is notated who they are and when they looked at your credit report. That stays on there for 24 months. 
let's look at an example. Let's say that you're at the department store and you're gathering up some merchandise. You go to the checkout uh, counter and the clerk says, hey, we've got a great deal for you. If you apply for this credit card and you get approved for it, you're gonna get this amazing discount. Maybe they're saying like today you get 20% off. Wouldn't that be wonderful? So you apply for the credit card. They look at your credit report and they see that you've always paid for your loans on time. Therefore you're approved, fantastic. Now you're thinking, wow, 20% off at this one store. That was pretty powerful and very energizing. So you now walk down the mall and you apply for every credit card at every store in the mall. Is this a good idea? No, this is a terrible idea. When somebody um, looks at your credit report in order to try to give you a loan that you've applied for, including a credit card, a few points are taken off your credit score. You apply for something else in a short period of time, more points come off than came off the first time. And every time you apply in a short period of time, there's a greater number of points that are taken off per inquiry. So you can see that this starts to hurt your chances of getting any loan or credit card. You can be turned down for these uh, application requests just because you have applied for too many things in a short period of time. So don't do that. There are things that um, you might see on the inquiry that does not hurt your score. And specifically that's self inquiries and advertising and promotional inquiries. So you can go in and take a look at your own credit report as many times as you want, and it does not hurt your credit score. Also, there are companies that will uh, contract with the credit reporting agency and get a list of people that fit into this category. So they know a lot about you and your credit report. So that is listed on your credit report as an advertising or promotional inquiry. Neither one of these hurts your score. Anything that does not hurt your score is called a soft hit on your credit report. Okay, I promised you that I would tell you more about how to uh, dispute information on the credit report. Let's say that you get a copy of your credit report and you see that there's a bank on there with an auto loan and you're like, I never had that auto loan. I've never heard of that bank. Um, so you would pull up their dispute form and you do this straight online. Um, it could look something like this or slightly different. And you would list the information, who it is, what information they have on the account number, and you would click not my account and send. Now they have 30 days to get it all corrected. I've talked to a couple people that have done this. One of them um, got it corrected within a week. One of them got it corrected within two weeks. You can do this with a paper form as well, but I would not mail something. I would use the automated system. I would use um, do it online. That way it goes straight in and it doesn't get lost on somebody's desk. Now, does this look difficult? Would you, would you pay somebody $300, $400, $500 to do this for you because it's so difficult? No, you wish your homework was this easy, right? So don't pay anybody to do this for you. Now, what if the information on your credit report was true? Yes, you know who that bank is. And yes, that was your auto loan. And something happened, you got behind and you finally got it up to date and you finally paid it off, but not on time. Now you want a new auto loan and you're afraid that your interest rate is gonna be vastly different because you didn't pay your auto loan on time last time. So right now, maybe you can get an auto loan for somewhere around 2% or 3%. But because of your delinquencies on your credit report, maybe your interest rate would be like 25%. Okay, well, that's thousands and thousands of dollars difference in interest. So, hey, there's a company you find that says, um, you know that information is true and we know that information is true, but we know about a loophole in the law. Just pay us $500 and we will get that off there for you. Sign here saying that it is not true and we'll tell them it's not true. Is this a good idea? No. Someone who's willing to lie for you is willing to lie to you. I've seen two different things happen, and I've seen this happen multiple times, but there's two different scenarios that I see happen when, when they do this. One of them is they give you, they email you a cleaned up credit report, 
or what you think is a cleaned up credit report. It's not really your credit report. They just faked a document online and on, emailed it to you. The other thing that I've seen is they temporarily are able to trick the credit reporting agency into changing your information. Now I say temporarily because within 30 to 60 days, maybe 90 days, it gets found out and gets switched back. So you're thinking, well, that's just enough time for me to get that new auto loan. Well, when the information gets switched back, a notification gets sent to anybody, any creditor that has um, pulled a credit report or, or booked a new loan on your credit report. Look at the fine print. I have seen people's interest rates go from 3%, 4% up to a penalty rate because they were found out to have lied on their application, lying about your credit report is lying on your application, and they get a penalty rate of 25, 29%. Okay, it's not worth it. It is not worth it. Um, the other thing that I've seen happen is instead of getting a penalty rate, there's they tell you, you just have to pay this off right now. You either pay it off or we take the car away. Um, it's not worth it. Don't pay somebody to lie for you because they end up lying to you, either by giving you a fake credit report or telling you everything's gonna be fine when it's not fine, it's going to come around and bite you. Um, wow. Was there a question in the... Uh... Yeah, there was actually. Um, wow, that's really interesting information that you just provided. So I was just listening to that and like, wow, that's that's very, very good. And I'm definitely gonna keep track of that quote you just put there from you. <laughs> so- um, Everybody asked me, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> I said that. I just told you, you said it. Okay. Well, I'm going to say Mike Jones from EEC said that. Okay. So uh, going back to the forms, you know, the dispute forms, like where can you locate those types of forms? Where, right. where can someone when, when you get a credit report, and I'm going to give you all the website addresses for that um, in a few slides. When you get your credit report on that same website that you get your credit report, there will be a link for dispute and there'll be a link for statements. Okay. Thank you. All right. That was the only question, so we're good. Okay, when you apply for a loan, there are a ton of things that are analyzed. Um, two of them we're gonna go into more detail. One of those is the debt to income ratio and the debt to limit ratio. We'll do those in more detail. But in addition to those, there's also the frequency of credit use, how recent there is a ramp up of credit, types of credit use, length of credit use, and timeliness of payments. Okay, so debt to income ratio. So of your income monthly, how much is used to uh, pay for your debt for your loans? Um, you get your paycheck and there's this gross amount right up there, the amount that is before anything's taken out, before taxes are taken out, before your social security uh, contribution is taken out before anything is taken out, there's that gross amount. And we calculate how much uh, percentage-wise you can use on repaying loans on that gross amount. So we figure that 60 to 70% of your income is gonna go for your normal monthly expenses, your taxes, your social security, your food, the gas for your car, the insurance, clothing, school expenses, whatever, right? And over and above that, you can use 30 to 40% for loans, okay? So that could be your house payment and your car payment and your credit cards and your loans and your student loans and all of that together. If you're using more than 40%, it is going to drastically hurt your credit score, okay? If you use more than 30%, it slightly hurts but over 40%, it drastically hurts. So the lower, the better. And the next thing is the debt to limit ratio. So you know that when you get a credit card, you do not have to use all of it. Should you use all of it? No, actually. We figure that you should use between zero and 40% unless it is an emergency. If it's an emergency, don't feel guilty just use it and then work on getting it down. Um, let me give you a couple examples. Let's say December um, 2019, right? December 2019. 
two different people. One person, they know that they've got a job and a part-time job. And so in December, they bought gifts for everybody and they just maxed out their credit cards. But they know that between working their full-time and their part-time job, boy, in the next you know, 10 to 11 months, they can get that paid off. Um, somebody else is like, well, you know, I just don't believe in using a lot of credit. So yeah, I put a few things on my credit card. You know, maybe I've used 10% or 20% of my credit card, um, but I, I haven't used the rest of it. And then March of 2020 comes along. The pandemic is in full force and people start to lose their job. Both of these people lost their job. One of them has all of their credit cards maxed out and one of them has very little um, used on their credit cards. Which one of them has emergency funds to help them make it through the next year? Well, you know which one. The one that's maxed them out, they're wondering how they're going to pay for anything. They certainly can't pay for their credit cards. So you can see that these scenarios um, are is a very vivid um, description of why maxing out your credit cards will hurt your credit score. So please keep it below 40%, below 30%, the lower the better. Did a couple of questions come in? Uh, yeah, well, someone was asking about where to find the recorded video because they have to leave a little early okay. when you're done, which is fine. It's on our YouTube channel and I posted it there for those of you who have to leave. We understand you're, you're on your lunch break. Uh, the other one had to actually deal with um, going back to what you were talking about, uh, you know, looking at the like, your credit report. Uh, this person wrote, sometime you're not sure if a loan is yours because it's name different. So how do you find out? Um, well, investigate. So I, I'm assuming it was long enough ago that you just don't remember. Um, if it is, if you just investigate all of your personal records and um, and you just don't think it's yours, go ahead and dispute it. I mean, you're, you're doing something honest there that you don't think it's yours. So it is, it's according to your best investigation of your personal stuff. Now, the only things that I've seen that really confuse people, and I don't know if it's mine or not, are things like um, a doctor bill from a long time ago, because sometimes there's the doctor, then there's the lab, and you know, it's like, who is that? Um, or um, you know, like um, an ambulance bill. It's like, well, I know I you went to an ambulance, but there's two of them listed there. And did I really, did I go that? So those are the types of things that I see people lose track of. Um, generally, you don't lose track of your credit cards. Um, you know that you had the credit card. Generally, you don't lose track of your auto loans. You know that you had those. But after investigating your own records, if you, it's like, I just don't recall this, go ahead and dispute it. Okay, fantastic, thank you. There are a lot of different types of companies that use um, credit reports. You know, you know about the lenders, but what about insurance agencies? My, the, where I have my insurance uses a credit report and I get a better uh, deal on my insurance rate um, because I have a good credit report. Collection agencies use a credit report to try to find people. Um, Telecommunications, so your phone. Um, they'll use a credit report to see if you have a reputation of paying back your bills on time. Therefore, um, if you don't, they might charge you um, a, a larger fee, an activation fee, a, a what if fee. They might call it many different things, right? Um, but what about that top one, the potential employer? Um, I think I heard last week that there was like 60% of the employers um, use credit reports when they're looking at somebody's application for employment. So you're going to uh, an interview and they wanna pull a credit report and you're thinking, I'm not applying for a loan, I'm applying for a job. Um, what's up with this? Well, there's a couple of things that they could be looking at. They could be looking at general responsibility um, there's also something else. You know, what if there's a lot of collections on your credit report or a lot of bills that haven't been paid? The collection agency could take you to court and prove that you owe them money. And 40 days after that, 
they can give all the information to the sheriff. The sheriff gives all the information to your employer. Then your employer by law then has to collect 25% of your wages here in California every time you get paid and send it to the sheriff so that the sheriff can pay who sued you. Now that's a lot of work on payday and your boss doesn't like doing extra work on a busy day already. Can you lose your job for this? I am told no, um, but I'm willing to bet you're not gonna get a promotion. Let me tell you about two people, real people, won't tell you their names, just tell you their situations. One of them, a young gentleman, um, he called me, said, what am I gonna do? Um, there's only one item on my credit report and it's a really big collection. And I know this person and I know why he didn't pay that item that went to collections. And I, um, I know that that company did some things that I don't think are very ethical, but they weren't illegal. Therefore, they still legally were due the money. Um, he didn't pay them just because he was frustrated at, at how they conducted the business. So I told him, take the money out of your sock drawer, get a cashier's check, send it to them, put a statement in your credit report, walk into that interview that you are worried about, that they say that they're gonna pull a credit report and you tell them right up front, when you pull the credit report, this is what you're gonna see. This is why I didn't pay them. And this is how I have gone ahead and paid them. Here's a copy of the, the cashier's check. You will never have a problem from me, from anybody. He got the job and it was a six figure job. He got it, he's doing a great job of it. Somebody else I know, they had like seven really little items. Like maybe there was $100 left over on a cable bill after they'd closed out the cable and they didn't pay it. And maybe there was, you know, a couple hundred dollars at a, uh, a doctor that they, you know, the insurance paid their part and this person didn't pay their part. So this, was, this lady, she, there were seven of them. And when she went to the interview, she didn't tell the employer, okay, this is what you're going to see on my credit report. And you would only tell them that if you know that they're pulling the credit report, because you have to sign for it. You have to sign and give them permission. So when the employer pulled the credit report and they see these seven collections, they're like, no. She was applying for a job that was about half the income as that other person, but she didn't get the job because she didn't take care of it. They were still owing and she didn't tell the interviewer up front what they were going to see when they pulled the credit report. So just because you have some problems on your credit report doesn't mean that you're not going to get that fantastic job. You can, but you've got to be proactive in dealing with your credit report and dealing with the potential employer. There are many different types of formulas for credit scores. FICO, Fair Isaac, is the most common um, credit reporting or credit score um, agency out there. Um, the others are, are competitors of FICO, but FICO has been around the longest. And that is the one that started with the score between 300 and 850, okay? Higher is better. When something negative happens, um, how many points come off your, your score depends on how severe it is, how recent it is, and how frequent it happens. Now, let me use recent as an example. If somebody missed a payment on their auto loan last month, that's gonna take a lot of points off because it's very recent. If somebody has great payments on their auto loan, except for one payment six years ago, that's not very recent and it's not gonna take hardly any points off at all. So you can see how recency really um, comes into play there. Okay, another trivia. Uh, what is the average FICO score for people in the United States? Is it 594, 644, 704, 734, or 814? You know it ends in a four. Let's go ahead and give your, your um, guesses in the chat. 704, 644, 594, 704 again, 704, 704, 704, 734, 644. There's a lot of 700s in here. Yep. Good, good guesses. And 700s, yep, a lot, a lot of 700s. So. so remember Minnesota, the average was the highest in the country. 
and theirs was 728. So those of you that kept that in mind, good job. You knew it was less than 728, um, 704. Good job. Now, what's an excellent score? So on a scale of 300 to 850, an excellent score is 740 and above. Okay, so very good to excellent, 740 and above. Good is just below that, and you see how it breaks down as we go down. I promised you the website addresses. Okay, so those trivia questions I got from my FICO. So FICO is the most common credit score company used, um, and their website is myfico.com. You can actually subscribe to it for a year. I do not remember what the subscription amount is. And you can play around with it. And they're like, OK, well, here's your score. And you're like, OK, what if this happens? What would happen to my score? What if this happens? What would happen to my score? And they'll give you all these great suggestions. Um, so you got to kind of be a credit geek like me to, to really find that fun, I guess. Um, then there are the three credit reporting agencies in the United, Sp in the United States, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You can get a free report from each one of them every year. That's what the law says. They have to be willing to provide you with a free report once per year. Now, we recommend that you get to those three credit reporting agencies through annualcreditreport.com. Now, we recommend that because annualcreditreport.com is actually not a third-party company. They are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion that came together to make that website so that it's easy for you to go to one place and get your credit report from each of those three. Now, I recommend if there's no problem that um, you, you space these out. If you think there's a problem, pull all of them right now. If um, there's no problem that you know of, then I recommend, let's say you go to Equifax and you pull that this month. And then four months from now, you pull Experian. And then four months after that, you pull TransUnion. And then four months after that, you're back to 12 months. You can go back to Equifax. You have spaced out um, monitoring your credit report over an entire year so that you can see that if something comes up. Not all of the information on all three of those is going to be equivalent. It's not going to be exactly the same. Some lenders report to one, some lenders report to all three, but you can see that if a lender only reports to one, you're not going to have identical information on all three. This is my favorite slide. You know that negative information can stay on for the longest seven years. So pretend that, it, that pain on time is rated as a one and behind is a two, Further behind is a three, four, five, clear on down to a nine. Pretend that this is July 2020. And this particular account can go back seven years to July 2013. And this particular account was behind. And then August comes along and it's still behind. September, it's even worse. October, it's even worse. And then the person on this account starts to catch up to date again and, and make all the payments on time. So pretend that there's seven years worth of monthly um, ratings all squeezed in the middle. Well, what happens next month, August? Well, another month is added, but now we have seven years and one month. And that last month is not perfect information. Therefore, it has to go away. Another month comes along. Take a look at the very last month, seven years, one month, that one month is negative, it has to go away. So every month that comes along in the present, something from the back has to be evaluated as to whether it is positive or negative information. If it's negative information, it has to go away. If this person has been paying all their bills on time again, they're now left with seven years worth of fantastic ratings. I love this slide because it takes a lot of what we uh, what we talked about and and puts it real into uh, really into one easy to understand um, slide. Why does all of this make any difference? It's like it's it's just a small late fee on my credit card. Well, all of those things added up show your credit history over time. And when you go to buy something big, it makes a difference. 
let's say that you want to buy a house and you're getting a 30-year mortgage 4%. Now, right now, the interest rates are so low, they're actually below 4%. Um, but you found 4% on a $200,000 house. Your interest over 30 years is 143,000. So that's 343 for that house. What if there are some uh, boo-boos on your credit report, um, some things that you didn't pay on time and you were able to get a mortgage. They weren't so bad that you got denied, but the interest rate that they're gonna give you is 6% instead of 4%. That's only 2% more on that $200,000 house. That means that the interest over 30 years is over $80,000 more over the 30 years. So that's about $250 per month more just because you didn't pay your credit cards and your student loan on time. You need to pay everything on time. Everything is a balancing act. In order to establish fantastic credit, you have to have credit. So you have to start somewhere. You have to start with maybe a small $500 credit card. Now remember of that $500 credit card, how much are you going to use to establish credit? No more than 40% unless it's an emergency. 40% on $500 is $200, right? You would use it and you would pay it off. Now, one thing that um, a lot of very well-intentioned people, they, they're gonna give you advice that used to be true. It's outdated. They're going to give you advice that is well-intentioned, but not true. They're going to say you need to charge on that credit card and pay a little balance and uh, pardon me, a little payment, leaving the rest of the balance. And next month, make a little payment and a payment and a payment. And that's the way it used to be. But it's not that way anymore. We have computers that could show us that you used it and paid it off. Our computers are smart enough to know that. So you're still establishing a credit history, a credit reputation, a positive credit score when you use it and you pay it off, okay? So, but you've got to use things and pay them down, pay them off in order for you to have a credit report, a credit score, okay? But don't get too much, all right? Like we said, don't go through the mall applying for everything. Right? There's a balancing act on everything. And when we make decisions on who gets a loan, no discrimination is allowed. This is a quote um, by the Federal Trade Commission saying, a credit scoring system may not use certain characteristics like race, sex, marital status, national origin, or religion as factors. No discrimination is allowed. Nothing on those um, characteristics tell me whether somebody's going to make their payment or not, right? There are people that make their payment and there are people that don't make their payment in every one of those different situations, right? So we can't use any discrimination in making decision, uh, decisions on loans. Can I, can I interject on, on the, that one? Uh, actually, this is a good question. This is a question related to the, the previous slide. So... Um, back to the debt ratio slide. So if yes. it's, let's say it's a married couple, mm -hmm. <laughs> marital status, like you were talking about, is it for both their gross um, salary? or uh, And then it says, for example, for a car payment, is it the whole amount you owe on the car loan or is it the monthly payment? So I don't so know. The, right. Yeah. The, the debt to income ratio is on the payments. So it's a monthly figure. So your monthly payment and your monthly gross income. As far as um, two people, um, your credit report is individual. Your application might be joint. Okay, so um, the computer, thankfully, you know, we have computers that do all this for us, so we don't have to do it by hand anymore. Uh, back in the day, let me tell you. Um, so the computer can take a look at your credit report, can take a look at your spouse's credit report. We can even take a look at what's called a merged report, where it's one printout of both of you on one report. And it is smart enough to figure out the debt to limit, debt to income ratios, um, taking all that into consideration. So, yeah. Okay, great. And then um, I have another uh, question. So what credit card company is best for beginners when starting credit? 
So not a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> not a fair question. Yeah. <laughs> I work for a lender. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm always going to tell you my lender. Um, what I'm going to tell you is be very careful. Here's the things that, that you want to, to evaluate. Um, are they charging you an annual fee for using that credit card? I personally will not take any credit card that charges me an annual fee. So, you know, that's one deciding factor. Another deciding factor is the interest rate. So um, when I do use it, what is the interest rate that's being charged? Um, some people, they pay their credit card off every month, no matter what. So they don't care what the interest rate is because if you pay it off every month, you never get charged interest. So they care about things like, do I get extra points? Like, do I, do I get you know, bonus points and I can cash those in and then you know, I can put that, that on my credit card and I don't have to pay part of the balance. Um, actually, that's what I do. <laughs> so I, I use my credit card on just about everything so that when I get enough points, so on my credit card, when I get 10,450 points, I know that I can cash those in and um, it's going to take $100 off of my balance. So that's just one example. Um, and that's on our platinum card, by the way. Um, but yeah, you have to take a look at the different options, but you know, be careful about any, any place that's going to charge you a fee just for having the card in your pocket. Great. And then we have a, a, another question, but it's probably more related to what credit cards, like practicing credit cards versus credit scores and credit reports. But should we pay the minimum on a credit card or always strive to pay in full every month? Right. So um, it is it is going to still help your credit report and it's still going to help your credit score if you pay it off and if you pay it off quickly. Um, but don't forget to use it again and pay it off again. Um, paying the minimum payment um, is just as good on your credit report and credit score, um, but it's better on your budget if you can pay it off, right? Because then you wouldn't have to pay interest. Definitely. So again, there's that's a balancing act, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so far um, I have gone about a year and a half without paying any interest on my credit card. Um, but I've had a credit card for shoot, 30 years. Um, there's, I've paid lots of interest over time, but I've gone about a year and a half straight without paying any interest. And that's my goal. Um, it's hard. I, I'm going to tell you, once you use that credit card, it is hard to not go, oh, I only have to pay a little bit. Um, but um, I'm yeah. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another question. So um, what if you have the full cash to buy things, but you want to grow your credit? What's the best way to do that regarding credit cards, et cetera? Right. Um, I use it at the, at the grocery store and then I pay it off. There are times when I have the, the, the cash in my checking account, I use the credit card, I come back and I just transfer the money. So the credit card company doesn't even know yet that I've used the card, um, but I'm transferring money onto it so that I pay it off. So that all still, um, that still establishes credit. Now, there are people that do not believe in using credit cards because they don't believe in debt. And this is one way that you can satisfy the belief of, of, of not wanting to ever use a loan. You're basically using it like it's an ATM card or like a debit card, um, but you're establishing a credit report. Um, and then there's people that do believe in, in using credit cards um, and, and having loans. I'm not going to tell you that you have to believe one way or the other, but I'm going to tell you that there are ways of establishing a good credit report with either belief. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Um, so we have two questions, additional questions, and they're kind of related. So first question is, does refinancing hurt your credit? And then the second one is, is there someone that I can, that can help you fix your credit to increase your score, for example, to buy a house? And who would you recommend? No, they're two great questions. questions. They're kind of similar. Yeah. Both of those questions are great. Refinancing does not hurt your score. Now, when you refinance, 
you need to be willing to either cut up or put your credit cards in the freezer. And literally, I know people that put them in a baggie of water and put it in the freezer to give them time to thaw before they go use it. Um, you, because if you refinance, and so you've got this consolidation loan, and then you go making all these little charges again that add up on your credit cards, you're going to destroy your budget. So you've got to be willing to just get rid of those or you know, definitely put them aside um, only for emergencies like the pandemic hit um, before you use them again. Um, where can you get great advice on repairing your credit and getting prepared for large purchases and whatever? Um, there are credit counselors, okay? And if you are a member of EECU, you can use our credit counselor, okay? Her name is Esmeralda. You can just uh, call our general number and say that you want to make an appointment with the, the lady that does counseling on budgets and credit. She goes to multiple branches throughout. Um, she has like a, a two weeks um, uh, rotation where um, she goes to um, 14 different branches. Um, and so she can meet with you. She can also meet with you over the phone. Um, and she can go over your specific credit report. If you're not a member of EECU, you can be if you want, um, just by opening an account, $5 with a savings account, and then you can meet with all of these professionals. There, is al there are also some um, credit counselors out there that you can use, um, you, know, you can look them up uh, online, so forth, but be careful. Um, you know, I, would, I would either go with Money Management International or a counseling agency through, um, the NFCC, National Foundation for Credit Counseling. So both of those are, are groups of counseling agencies, uh, IMM, International Money Management, any of their offices, or NFCC, any of their offices. Um, there's some others I don't know off the top of my head. Um, just out of full disclosure, I have worked in my current job for 20 years. Prior to that, I did work for one of those two. Um, and uh, the one that I worked for um, now belongs to the other one. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that, though. Uh, that, that's really good information. I didn't even know that was available through the local credit union. So that's good stuff to know. Um, I know you're wrapping up. Is this is this the time for other questions right now for students? To ask? Any and all questions. And if you think of one later, you can always email me. OK, fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, Jesus, this, this was there was a lot of great information here. Uh, Mike, I appreciate it. Um, a lot of good uh, storytelling and examples and uh, things that people should think about, you know. So if you have any questions, anyone, please propose it right now um, before. We, oh, here we go. We got somebody. Oh, I'll say they're saying thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, OK, so uh, while they're still thinking, I'm also going to here. I'll turn on my video. I am going to um, put in the chat a uh, survey feedback uh, to, to give Mike, whoops, here we go, uh, to give Mike and us a little bit of information about, you know, how you thought the presentation was today, the content, and then also maybe some future topics that you'd like to hear about, because, you know, we, we, we looked at previous um, survey feedback and credit scores and credit reports is right at the top, so that's why we brought in our great speaker today. All right, so let's see here. We got some other people. Thanks for the information. So they're just saying, thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, for those of you who are still listening in, um, I will also, if you don't have time to do the survey on your phone or on your laptop, I will send it in an email. So you'll, you'll be expecting it from me shortly. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, I always check my, uh, my credit scores once a year on the annualcreditreport.com. I didn't know it was all three of them actually that came together to create that website. So that's, that's really good information to know. And then, yeah, you're right. I mean, the balancing act of all the things that you need to know and, and observing and looking at all the credit cards you've had and whether you missed a payment thing, that's, that's just part of life. So we all have to take ownership of everything we do and, and you have to determine what's best for you as far as, you know, what you're seeking out. Okay. So, uh, oh, they'll, they'll say, well, we have one like this for first time home buyers. Will you have one like this for first time home buyers? Oh, 
Yes, we actually did have one. Mike actually presented the one on home buying. So if you go to, I put it on the chat earlier. I think I can find it again. We we actually uh, recorded that one as well. So if you want to listen to it, that's fine. It's on the Fresno State Careers uh, Career Development Center's website. It's on our YouTube channel link. Um, I'll see if I can pull it up again and post it there. So yeah, if Mike, you, I mean, you have and some if you want to. If you want to attend uh, another one just like it, um, we have a home buying workshop um, six o'clock on the 11th. Just send me an email um, so that I can I can RSVP you. And uh, then I would send you the link. I'll probably send the link out on maybe the 10th. Um, yeah, oh, that's great. Thank you, yeah, see? So, uh, hey, hey you're willing, if you're willing to go out there and here we go, I put it on the YouTube channel. But if you wanna watch it live and ask some specific questions, maybe, you know, he can, he can answer them during that, that webinar. All right. Well, it's getting close to the hour. So with, the, uh, let's see, do I have any more questions? I'm looking at the, oh, here we go. Here's some new questions. So what if someone refinances a car loan and then co-signs for you? How, how much will that help your credit? So yeah, if you get a loan and somebody co-signs for you, it still helps your credit. Um, if somebody else gets a loan and puts you as an authorized user, it only helps your credit tiny, tiny bit. So authorized users, not much. Um, but if you get a loan and somebody else is the co-signer, helps your credit just like you did it on your own. Okay. And here's the other question. Uh, is it better to make multiple payments on a monthly credit card payment or wait to pay the final statement balance once a month? So... Um, you know, what, whether you do one or the other, it's still going to show as using your credit. And so you still have excellent credit report and credit score for doing that. Um, it's just going to help your budget by paying it off as soon as possible so that you pay less interest. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, um, okay, well, it doesn't look like any more questions are coming in, but we want to thank you, Mike Jones from Educational Employees Credit Union for joining us today at the Fresno State Money Management Center and all the, um, the listeners today, the students, the people listening in on credit scores, credit reports. And um, we, again, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. All right. Well, we're done for today. Thank you so much, everyone. Goodbye.